Hi, this is Tom with Avidyne, and today we're going to talk about controlling the remote transponder using the IFD. The IFDs are capable of controlling either the Avidyne AXP322 remote transponder, and with our most recent software upgrade, we can now control the NGT9000R remote transponder. The remote transponder is great for when you have a tight panel space and you want to put in a large IFD or a couple as you see here in the Cirrus. We've removed two 430s and put in an IFD 440 or five, and a 540 in the same space and then remote mounted the transponder. So when properly configured you can access the transponder window by pushing the knob on the lower left. That's the same knob that switches from COM and NAV. It may require two pushes because the first will move the cursor from the standby COM down to the standby NAV, and then you push it again, it'll take you to the transponder window. Same is true on the 4 Series. You can go into the data block setup, and you can actually configure the data blocks so that you have your squat code displayed all the time, which is really convenient. We're showing how you can configure to put it on one of the top blocks on the strip across the top of the map. Going into the AUX page, Setup tab, and then hit Data Block Setup. Scroll to this data block on the top blocks, and then on the small knob, scroll down to Remote Transponder, and that will allow it to display all the time. We have a couple other options. Of course, you have the little data blocks that slide out on the right side of the screen. You can add the transponder data block right in your, in, in your whole list of data blocks there in any place you would like it. And that way you can keep it up all the time as well. Again, in from the AUX page setup tab, data block setup, you used to go to the, move the cursor over to the, uh, one of the data blocks on the right side and then select transponder thumbnail. One more option you have on the 5 series boxes there's the option to put up a thumbnail either for traffic or for transponder where the nav frequencies used to be. Remember you can also configure this for multiple COM standbys and of course when you push the button it'll toggle between COM and then nav and then your transponder shows up here. Again this is the left data block configuration. So whichever way you do it, it makes it super easy. You can just touch on that and, as it says here, touch on the, any of the transponder data blocks or the thumbnail, and it will bring up the transponder control panel. And you can set squawk code, you can ident the transponder, or change modes. Again, use the keypad or twist the left knobs to change the squawk code, so you can use the... the seven digit eight digit keypad here to enter the code or by spinning the knobs on the left side the large knob moves the two digits on the left and the smaller knob moves the two smaller digits same with the four series if you have the Bluetooth keyboard connected you'll notice there is a transponder button if you push it it will bring up the transponder window where the COM used to be. So you can control the COM, you can control the NAV, or you can control the transponder right from the, the uh, Bluetooth keyboard. Uh, just one thing to note, that currently the IFD100 app for your iPad does not currently support control of the remote transponder. So you do that. If you want to ident, you have to reach up and touch the screen to ident, either in the data block or here on the thumbnail window. Optionally, our, our, the Avidyne remote transponder does support a remote ident switch. A lot of folks wire those into the yoke. It's a momentary ground, and it will remote ident for you. That way, you don't have to reach across. So that would require, during installation, someone to wire that in for you. But it is an option. When you do ident, it turns green right here to let you know it's identing. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy. Fly safe out there, everybody, and have a great day.